Hey guys, it's Nick and the Elon Musk Twitter saga continues. In this video, I'm going to talk about the poison pill, a possible tender offer and other possible investors who are showing interest in this deal. Also, Elon says that board members will get no pay when he takes over Twitter. So are the board members really resisting his offer because without their Twitter board pay, they will have to go back to their old jobs making $15 an hour at McDonald's? Or is Elon pointing out their pay and lack of Twitter stock holding just as a negotiating tactic to get the public on his side and put pressure on the board? I'm going to take a look at the board members and see if it looks like they really need their Twitter board pay or not. And it seems people are starting to believe that the deal has a slightly better chance of happening now since the stock is up around 7% to $48, which is still about 13% below Elon's offer price of $54.20. So let's start with the poison pill. The board passed this on Friday. And what this means is that if anyone buys more than 15% of Twitter stock or even makes a tender offer, that would make them acquire over 15%, then current shareholders, excluding Musk, would be offered additional stock at a discount. Now, if you ask me, this is not really a good look for a woke company like Twitter because they are actively discriminating on Elon Musk, who last time I checked is actually an African-American, right? So this poison pill will increase the number of shares outstanding and it dilutes Musk's percentage share of Twitter stock, but it also dilutes the current shareholders. So it's really not a good pill to swallow for anyone. And that's kind of why they call it a poison pill. It's something that makes everybody a little bit sick, but supposedly doesn't kill the host in this case, Twitter. And now Musk recently tweeted out a reference to the Elvis Presley song, Love Me Tender, implying that he may plan to make a tender offer directly to shareholders so they can decide without the board's approval if they want to sell their stock for $54.20. Still, the poison pill would apply, so it's not really clear how this plan would work. In the meantime, he is possibly teaming up with Larry Ellison from Oracle, who's worth about a hundred billion dollars. And he's also on the Tesla board and I guess a friend of Elon Musk. And private equity firm Toma Bravo could also be involved in investing with Musk to buy Twitter. And now Apollo Global Management is reportedly also interested in helping Musk or even someone else buy Twitter. Now, where did I hear that name, Apollo Global Management, before? Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, this is where I remember him. The former co-founder and CEO quit Apollo about a year or so ago uh, because of an investment scandal with this guy who you probably can't name on YouTube. And they said that Black paid this guy $158 million for financial advice from 2012 to 2017. That must have been some really good advice. And interestingly enough, Barron's mentions that Apollo is the buyout firm that now owns Yahoo. Verizon bought it for about $5 billion around 2017, along with another $5 billion for what's left of AOL. And about a year or two ago, they sold it for about half that price that they paid to Apollo Global Management. The funny coincidence here with Apollo owning Yahoo is that Yahoo was in a similar situation that Twitter finds itself in now. In 2008, Microsoft offered about $44.6 billion for Yahoo, which was about a 60% premium over the current stock price at the time. And the Yahoo board of directors rejected that offer. And so not only did Yahoo shareholders get kind of screwed over by not realizing that $44.6 billion, but the deal also would have been for a portion or uh, all Microsoft stock, which was about $30 at the time. So had they done that deal and held, uh, Yahoo holders would have be up about 10 times on their money since 2008 instead of 
being sold off in bits and pieces to Verizon and selling off the Alibaba stock that <laughs> um, comprised of Yahoo for a very low price. It's a pretty interesting story. I should probably do a video on it. So let's take a look at the Twitter board of directors backgrounds. Do they really need the money and this is why they're holding up the deal or is it that they don't want to give up control to Elon Musk possibly? And as this Barron's article points out, Musk says Twitter board owns almost no stock, but Tesla's board is not that much better it seems. Here's the Tesla board of directors, Elon Musk, Larry Ellison, Kimball Musk, and the rest of them don't own that much. And here's the Twitter board of directors and how much they own. And most of it comes from stock grants as part of their pay every year that I guess they just sell as soon as they get it. So let's look at these board of directors and see how hard up they are for this money to see are they holding this deal up because of the money or because they don't want somebody like Musk to control Twitter that may roll back some of the censorship. So everybody knows Jack Dorsey owns a whole bunch. He's the founder, but let's look at the rest of these guys. So Omid Kordistani, he was at Google from May 1999 till 2009, senior vice president, chief business officer, advisor to CEO and founders of Google, all this stuff. And he has a net worth of around $1.4 billion, apparently. So he doesn't really need the money. Parag is the CEO currently, so he must get a pretty good salary. So I'm sure he doesn't really need that money. His compensation is a million as well as 12 and a half million in stock compensation. David Rosenblatt doesn't have his own Wikipedia, but he's the CEO of First Dibs, an online luxury marketplace. And it has received 170 million in funding to date with a valuation of more than 500 million. So I don't think he's hard up for a few hundred grand a year from Twitter. Brett Taylor was the co-creator of Google Maps and CTO of Facebook, and he is co-CEO at salesforce.com. So I'm pretty sure he's not hurting for money either. This woman, Martha Lane Fox, Baroness Lane Fox of Soho. She has some special title. She was a co-founder of Last Minute during the dot-com boom, and she sold it for 577 million pounds, which is probably over a billion dollars at the time of the exchange rate in 2005. So she's not hurting for money either. Patrick Pichet was senior vice president and CFO of Google from 2008 to 2015. Now he's a venture capital fund manager. So obviously he doesn't need the money. Robert Zolik is uh, allegedly a, a very deep state kind of guy. He was the 11th president of the World Bank, United States Deputy Secretary of State, Managing Director at Goldman Sachs, member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He is supposedly a Republican never Trumper who signed the open letter, which the GOP said why they don't support Donald Trump. So <laughs> I'm sure he probably doesn't want Elon owning Twitter and bringing Trump back in. Uh, he probably doesn't care about the money. And he seems to have been a big war hawk even before 9-11 because he signed this 1998 letter by PNAC to President Clinton. They said they wanted Clinton to employ a full complement of diplomatic, political, and military efforts. So he was calling for Iraq invasion even before they dreamed up that uh, weapons of mass destruction thing after 9-11. And Egon Durbin joined Silver Lake in 1999, and he's co-CEO, and they were one of the early investors in Twitter, among a bunch of other companies. They're a venture capital firm, so he definitely has some money. And this woman, Fei Fei Li, is a PhD from Stanford in physics and all kinds of stuff. And she's on the board because her expertise is in artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. And I believe Elliott Management, when they bought a piece of Twitter to shake up the company, uh, wanted somebody with artificial intelligence experience on the board. So this is probably why she's here. She doesn't look like she's super rich, but um, 
I'm sure she makes a pretty good salary at Stanford or wherever she teaches. And this woman, Mimi, who I can't pronounce her last name, is a development finance executive who served as executive vice president at U.S. Overseas Private Investment Corporation and African Development Bank. And if you don't know, that's kind of um, a U.S. government arm, and it's merged with USAID, I believe, which a lot of people claim to be a kind of, um, I don't know, uh, arm of the State Department or the CIA or something like that, getting involved in all these other countries and loaning them money and uh, that kind of thing. So with Apollo also getting involved in this, it seems that some big players are very interested in keeping Twitter in the right hands. So is Elon Musk just not welcome because he wants to reduce censorship on Twitter? Or is this just a negotiating tactic to get the richest man in the world to increase his offer by a few billion dollars? If the Twitter board doesn't remember the fiasco of the $44 billion Microsoft bid for Yahoo that was rejected, they may be doomed to repeat that mistake. On the other hand, these boards have no accountability and people have a very short memory. Does anyone even remember the Microsoft offer for Yahoo, let alone any of the board members that rejected that bid? I didn't think so. I hope you liked this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.